to Miami Heat are trying to send a very clear message. Miami is absolutely taking the heart of the Boston Celtics. One win away for the Miami Heat from the NBA Finals. Oh, should we break out the brooms? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to First Take. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. Thank you for being with us. That is Stephen A. Smith, Kendrick Perkins. I'm Molly Karam. Gentlemen, how we feeling? How we living this morning? Well, I hope y'all had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, I did. I mean, the Lakers kind of, you know, got, got exposed to some degree. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But as if, if you remember that movie, The Campaign with Will Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis, remember that? And he was like this, I'm bringing my brooms because it's a mess. <laughs> That's what's going on in the world of basketball right now on the mm -hmm. East Coast and the West Coast. Yeah. I mean, good Lord. All right, yeah. let's let's get it, guys. Hot mess that is. So as the eight seeded Heat continue their historic run through the Eastern Conference postseason, a stretch that is now just one game away from another NBA Finals appearance. Eric Spolstra's team embarrassed the number one seed Celtics, 128-102, Game Three Sunday night. They did so by relying on a host of younger players who continue to embrace the moment. As for the Celtics superstars, a whole lot of chirping. Jason Tatum, is all that criticism getting to you? I deleted Twitter um, from my phone to start the playoffs. So, uh, honestly, I haven't seen anything um, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, since game one against the Hawks. Uh, so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm certain after every game you win, you're the best player in the best team. And, you know, when you lose, you're not the star and the team's not good enough. So, uh, I'm certain there would be some of that, uh, but, you know, out of sight, out of mind. The obvious letdown, I feel like we let our fan base organization down, we let ourselves down, and it was collective. We can point fingers, uh, but in reality, it was just embarrassing. Just, I just didn't have him ready to play. I should have, uh, whatever it was, whether it was the starting lineup, whether it was an adjustment, just I have to get them in a better place, ready to play, and that's on me. So why did the Celtics get destroyed last night, you asked? Look no further, you asked. Look no further than their two all-NBA stars in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who just couldn't make shots. Meanwhile, undrafted guard Gabe Vincent outscored them both 29 to 26. Kendrick, obviously you played for this franchise, won a championship with them in Boston. I'm curious, who looks worse to you now? Is it the coach and Joe Mazzulla or in the stars in Tatum and Brown? Oh, Molly, it's definitely Joe Mazzulla. And for him to go up there in his post-game interview and say, I didn't have those guys ready, I got to figure it out, well, that's a damn shame. And I knew that he made the wrong choice when we got the report before the game started that he was starting Derek White and, putting Robert, and bringing Robert Williams off the bench. That is a huge problem to me. Your best player... And Jason Tatum has come out time and time again publicly telling you, if we're going to win a championship, this is the, the most important piece of this team outside of me and Jalen Brown is Robert Williams. But you bet you keep on harping on starting a 36-year-old Al Horford because all you want to do is worry about the offensive end and stretching the floor and having guys play AAU-style basketball so that way y'all can live by the three and die by the three. No, you're supposed to start Robert Williams. He does so much for you on both ends of the floor. We already know what he's going to bring defensively. Elite shot blocking, being able to guard the pick and roll, being able to get out there and switch out on one on uh, guards and wings if he have to. Offensively, when Jason Tatum had 51 in Game 7, a lot of that came off the back of Robert Williams. Because he's so much of a dynamic roller, because he's a lob threat at the basket and guys have to pay attention to him, because he plays the dunker spot so well, it allows those guys to be able to operate and be the best version of themselves. So I'm looking at Joe Missoula and I'm sitting up here saying, well, damn, the Celtics' identity all last year was defense. But you made an adjustment to go offensively by inserting Derek White and putting Robert Williams on the bench. So I'm looking at Joe Mazzulla on this one. 
Got to disagree with you there. I'm not disagreeing with your point about uh, Joe Missoula, and it is a problem, and it is something that we will get in to as this show progresses today, Kendrick Perkins, and I hope you had a nice weekend, by the way, my brother. But I got to tell you something right now. Um, I sincerely doubt that you had a nice weekend after watching that atrocity last night uh, because you are a prideful champion representing the Boston Celtics franchise, even though obviously you're an analyst for this network. And there's no way in hell you could tell me that you got any enjoyment, even though you did forewarn all of us, that especially me, that Boston did not want to see Miami. I don't give a damn what you said. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't expect this. Not what we saw. I would remind you that last night as we watched Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, we watched Jason Tatum and and Jalen Brown combine to shoot 12 of 35 from the field, one of 14 from three-point range, six turnovers, okay, in that process, more turnovers than assists. In this series, they're shooting seven for 40 from three-point range, the two of them. Seven for 40, that is 17%. And they have more turnovers than assists. That is atrocious. And I love me some Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And I believe both are stars. And it's hard to imagine how you can transfer from dropping 51 in a closeout game seven against the Philadelphia 76ers to this mess that we've witnessed in this series. It's an indictment against the Philadelphia 76ers, no doubt about it. It's an indictment against Embiid and Harden, okay, which is something we'll get into another time. But it is now you look at giving credit to the Miami Heat, and of course they deserve it. But on their worst day, meaning Boston's worst day, I never expected this for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to, A, look helpless. We haven't seen that. We've seen them defeated. We've seen them beat. We haven't seen them look helpless. And more importantly, we have never, I don't think there has ever been a time where I've seen the Boston Celtics and I felt they got their hearts snatched out their chest. The only thing that I can think of in my years of watching the NBA where I've seen something tantamount to this. If you remember Kendrick Perkins, remember, I think it was, I'm trying to remember which year it was, but the Lakers ran the San Antonio Spurs out of of California. Mm -hmm. And Tim Duncan sat there depressed, looking like he was crying. And Popovich was sitting next to him tapping him on his knee, it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. In the time where I've seen the Boston Celtics and I felt they got their hearts snatched out their chest. The only thing that I can think of in my years of watching the NBA where I've seen something tantamount to this. If you remember Kendrick Perkins, remember, I think it was, I'm trying to remember which year it was, but the Lakers ran the San Antonio Spurs out of of California. Mm -hmm. And Tim Duncan sat there depressed. Getting it better and you, you improving. Then she said, the Celtics laid it down like a fresh set of dominoes. As a country boy, <laughs> I like that one. I had to say, you go, girl. You go, girl, because that's exactly what they did. But SA, it's hard, Molly, for me mm-hmm. to blame Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because as you get deep into the rounds, coaching mm-hmm. gets better. And what we're watching, even when you look at the Nuggets, Look at the Nuggets in their player movement, in their ball movement, and the way that they're handling the Lakers right now and how difficult every shot is for the Lakers. Look at the heat. Look at the player movement. Look at the multiple actions. Look at Duncan Robinson setting back picks and then coming off a pin down off the opposite side. When you look at the Celtics, it's the same style. Here, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, go isolation. You can't do that against this Heat team. They're number one in the league in taking charges. And when you talk about boxes and elbows, it is zero driving gaps for those guys. So at some point, Missoula, you have to help your superstars well, out. 
and put them in position to be successful. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say, Perk, is that I, I want to make sure you understand. I, I'm not disagreeing with those points, but we know they're young in age. Right. But Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been here before. It's like a fourth conference finals for Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. I mean, what the hell is going on? You, Jalen Brown, two of ten, what is it, two of 20, I'm sorry, from three-point range. I get what you're coming from, but you still had an opportunity to make some shots from threes, and you're shooting two for 20. I mean, there's just no way around this when you consider the, I, I mean, just the impotence of both of them right. in this particular equation. I can look at Spolstra and his genius. I can look at Missoula being exposed as a rookie coach, if that, a rec league coach. That's how he looks compared to Eric Spolstra. Mm -hmm. No disrespect intended, but my God, the discrepancy is flagrant. You, can, you still can't get around the fact that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown aren't doing anything close to what their capabilities are, what their resume tells us. And more importantly, it's one thing to lose. The Lakers lost. The Lakers lost to a better team. Boston has better talent. You got a guy like Gabe Vincent who's outscoring Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown combined. The brother's mm -hmm. undrafted. He's outscoring them combined. On their worst day, we did not expect them to look this bad. And sometimes that ain't about coaching. That's about you. I'm not absolving Missoula. I get it. But I'm saying at some point in the game of basketball, unlike football, offense, defense, special teams, and you're sitting there and there's just so much you can do. You can't help it because you need so many other guys. In a sport of basketball, if two guys show up, Molly, if two guys show up, Perk, guess what? Even when you lose, even when you outclassed, it don't look like what we saw yesterday. Yeah. It don't look like last night. Yeah. Right, it don't look like that. Let's leave it there. Here's the good news, Stephen A. You're going to be in Miami. So let's get to the Miami side of things. The Heat continue to defy the odds. I know. You're going to be practicing your Spanish. Earning win after win this postseason despite stop. being the un – please don't. The underdog in most of them. Only the 94-95 Rockets have more such wins and a higher winning percentage as the underdog in the playoffs. Here's Bam on that underdog mentality. When you got guys with – 